What do the first lady of country music and amateur motocross have in common? You might think to yourself, not a thing. But the truth is, it's right here on Loretta Lynn's very own ranch, the same place where some of the most beautiful country songs in history were written, that the future of motocross's superstars are determined. We have riders here from the ages of four to 54, male and female, all up for the greatest test between rider versus machine at the nation's largest amateur motocross event. This is Loretta Lynn's, presented by Casio G's One Commando, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome everybody to beautiful Hurricane Mills, Tennessee, the home of the legendary coal miner's daughter. That's right, the one and only Loretta Lynn. Hey everybody, I'm Sal Masakela, your host of the Red Bull Signature Series. And when you look at this tranquil setting, you'd be hard pressed to believe that this has actually been the pivotal difference maker in every pro motocross superstar that ever touched a dirt bike. But it's true. You see, 31 years ago, Loretta Lynn changed the game, changed the face of amateur motocross by hosting the first ever national motocross competition right here on her very ranch. This week, the future hopeful superstars of the sport, they're gonna leave it all on the track, hoping that they too can be the next hero of motocross. And there's no pressure, just the watchful eyes of all the top talent scouts and, of course, the shot at major endorsement. A win here at Loretta Lynn's will take you from the amateurs straight to the pros. That's the bottom line. And as the first riders get ready for heat one, how about we send it up to the boys in the booth? Gentlemen. Thanks a lot, Sal. Excited to be here. Jason Wygand alongside seven-time champion at Loretta Lynn Branch, Jeff Emig. And these are exciting times. The pressure is on these riders in the starting gate because this is the biggest race of their lives. And it's one of the longest races, too. They'll be putting in a 20-minute moto in the intense heat and humidity down here in Tennessee. So it will be a real test of fitness as well as skill and speed. And this racetrack is a true test for these riders as well. They can only race on it once a year. Jeff, you've been around it many times yourself. Thank us for a lap at Loretta Lynn Ranch. Well, once the gate drops, you're gonna fire down the start straight. You're gonna make a right hand sweeper. You get to this point, pretty much should have your whole shot winner, the guy in first should be decided. Come out of the trees. Head for the classic section, the Ten Commandments. They've been here for decades. They've been reshaped, reorganized at times, but there's still 10 of them, still one of the toughest parts of the track. Now you're gonna head back into some more tree areas. This soil is clay with some sand mixed into it. The key to winning here and the key to going fast is being good through the rutted turns. Fast sandy sweeper right there in front of the Red Bull VIP area. Back out into the open area, this right-hand sweeper, one of the best passing spots on the track. You're gonna get to the final turn, make a left, head up towards the finish line, another couple of rhythm jumps, back down the start straight, and that's a lap here at Loretta's. First race up today will be the third and final moto of the 250B Modified Class. Two motos already in the books in this division. Matt Bashalia out of Texas holds the points lead coming into this one. Cooper Webb right behind him, the Australian. Luke Clout and Jace Owen also have a shot at this title. Lots of pressure on the line. Let's send it down to Tina Dixon. 
Not only is Loretta the most prestigious amateur race, it is also the most difficult to get into. There are about 26,000 entries for less than 1,400 spots. Just to qualify for Loretta's is a huge achievement. Also want to point out, this is the only time of year riders actually get to line up at the gate. Before that, it was a grass field. In fact, Moto One, the start, it was still grass here. But by the time the 250B modified class goes, 88 races would have already taken place on the track. But at the end of the week, when all the action is done, the champions have been named, Loretta's, this track, turns back into a grass field. Thanks, Tina. And this is not only the largest amateur race, it's also the longest. 20-minute motos, that's the longest these riders will face all year, and three of them in the week. Let's go racing. And out of the center of the pack, one of the Kawasaki's, that is Georgia's Nick Gaines on the 71, going to grab the whole shot. Perry Yamaha's there with him. And the Honda now, Luke Cloud getting past both. So Cloud with the number 92 in second. You got Cooper Webb and Anthony Rodriguez, third and fourth. And look to the inside. It looks like Michelle on the Honda making his way past the Yamahas also. So two of those top running Yamaha riders already dropped a couple positions here on the first quarter of the lap. They're going to have their work cut out for them. And remember, Bishalia, as they just got through that Ten Commandments section, is the points leader coming into this moto. So those were key passes as they head into Storyland. Gaines, Clout, Bishalia, Rodriguez, and Webb, your top five. Difficult track here because you see you're going from the sunshine, the daylight, into the shadowed area. Rodriguez trying to make a pass back on Bishalia. And the inside. Now, Rodriguez won the first moto in this class, had trouble in moto two. So he's now a championship spoiler, really not in position to win the title. But he would love to show his speed by passing Bishalia back as Gaines tries to get away. Well, yeah, because if you get a first, an 18th, and then back to a first again, you pretty much shown that you had the speed and you were the guy, and that's what all the sponsors are looking at. He's got his work cut out for him, though. Gaines already opening up a little bit of distance as Bashalia is going after Clout for the number two spot. Clout, the Australian, has definitely opened some eyes so far this week. But Bashalia has his eyes focused on a title, and he's moving forward. Still got to try to catch this kid, though, Gaines, who's had some bad luck here at the ranch before, looking to right all those wrongs right now. I mean, look at the line of riders here, Jason. In just a couple years, these riders, we're going to be calling them at the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Okay, this is the future talent of our sport. Absolutely. You're watching coverage from Loretta Lynn's presented by Casio G's One Commando, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series here at Loretta Lynn's. And there's a reason why all these fans jam the fences in Tennessee every summer. It's because they want to see the future professional superstars of motocross in action. And it's been that way since 1982. The heritage of Loretta Lynn's is woven in the footsteps of the greatest athletes ever to grace the sport. Travis Pastrana, Ricky Carmichael, and James Stewart all began their careers here 30 years ago. Mooney and Loretta Lynn made a deal with promoters to host the first amateur national championships right here on their ranch. Now, it's the biggest amateur race on the planet. Some of the other events, I think, were, were more regional in scope. With Loretta Lynn's, it was like the Little League World Series. I mean, it was like this sacred playing ground that no one could get on. The only way you could be there is to earn it. And I think that that really built a sense of fair play. It built a sense of a, an even playing field. That was before the internet, before Facebook, and, and uh, you only heard about the West Coast Rider or the, the East Coast Rider. So it was in a day that was a lot different. It is the world's largest, most prestigious amateur motocross event. A win here, and you are truly a champion. To win the championship at Loretta Lynn's, the rider has to earn the best finishing average out of three moto classes. It's a time-honored tradition that's been a telling sign for the next generation of champions in the pro ranks. But I like to remind people that the essence of Loretta Lynn's has not changed. It's still an even playing field. It's still three motos. It's still an opportunity to compete all week long when you get there. And when you show up, it's the most important race you've ever been in because it's the one that everyone's watching. And there you see Ryan Dungey, who won his first and only title here at the ranch in 2005. The next year was signed to a 
pro contract and has gone on to become one of the true superstars of the sport. That's the path these riders are trying to follow in 2012. Nick Gaines leading the way in the 71, the 95 of Matt Bichalia, and Jeff, a great battle developing for third between Luke Clout and the number 92 and Cooper Webb in the 75, and there they are. Look at this, Cooper Webb to the inside of Clout, taking over third. All right, trying to establish himself here. These guys are already fairly well known in the amateur ranks. Let's get to know some of the stars of the B-class. Since I was a kid, I was always trying to come here to Loretta. The first time I came here, I was just hoping to make it, to qualify to here. And then with the time going, I was just dreaming to win a moto here or a title. And thank God I did win a moto here, being the first Venezuelan to win it. And I hope Saturday I'll be the first Venezuelan to win a title. I'm just kind of a, a normal kind of guy. I live in a kind of a small town. Went to school up until this year and had to get homeschooled and just kind of kind of a normal kid, though. Not too extraordinary, just uh, keep it low key and that's about it. Uh, I'm a hard worker at home. I don't have too much time to do anything else, you know. I wake up pretty early in the morning, road bike, work out, go ride, and by the time everything's all done for the day, uh, it's pretty much dinner time and bedtime. So, you know, that's about all I can say. And that's the kind of dedication it takes to succeed down here. All these riders ride and train full time. Nick Gaines continuing the lead, Matt Bichalia into the Ten Commandments. A big battle brewing at the 75 of Webb, the 67 Rodriguez, and now the 77 of Paul Coates trying to make the move on Luke Clout. Trying to take the long way around right there. Clout shuts the door, but I tell you, if you can get a good rhythm through the Ten Commandments, you can shut them off, close off that inside. Did not work that time. And what an interesting battle you've got. Rodriguez, who's from Venezuela, Clout, who's from Australia, and Coates, an Englishman. It means all these riders have to come to the U.S. multiple times throughout the year to complete the qualifying process just to get to this race. In the case of Rodriguez, he's actually moved to the U.S. full-time now to pursue a professional career. Yeah, and it just shows you how important this race is in the, you know, in the sport of motocross, in the, in the world scope of everything, that the best of the best come here. And these young men are uh, learning how to become uh, professionals. They'll be there soon, uh, but this is the proving ground, and this is where uh, they line up those factory rides for the future. And a couple of them already have it. You saw the 75 of Webb in third, trying to close in on the leaders. He already has a guaranteed pro deal for the future with his Star Racing Yamaha team. There he is, trying to close that gap between himself and Gaines and Michalia. Yeah, and it's interesting with Webb there. He gave up those positions early on lap one, and now he's trying to make it back up. You know that Bichelia setting in second right now. He's got a second and a first, this being the, the third and final moto. He's keeping a real close eye on where Webb is at because Webb had a 3-2 coming into this. So that's the real battle for the championship here. And I think you can sense that as Webb starts to make moves. Bichelia does as well, getting to the inside and taking the lead away from Gaines. But Gaines able to line him back up and steal it away. Bichelia pulls the tear off. He's going to take the wide line coming into the Ten Commandments. Trying to use a little extra speed and momentum, but it's a long way around. Gonna They're going to meet at the end. Gaines able to hold him off, Jeff. The pressure is on Gaines, and I'll tell you, these two men, they have definitely upped the pace because Webb is not even in our picture. And yeah, Webb looked like a lap or so ago. He was closing the gap, and now it's really a two-rider oh, duel. Oh, Gaines. Gaines goes down. What happened there? Just uh, slid it out there a little bit, coming out of the inside. He's going to lose a bunch of positions and possibly the overall win there. That's going to allow Matt Michelia, who was your winner in Moto2, a clear track all the way to the finish. Now this championship is solely in his hands. Uh, he's got to try to hang on with the Yamahas up to second and third now of Webb and Rodriguez. And look at Gaines, finally gets the bike going. He lost a lot of ground in that. Yeah, that was a good uh, 15, 18 seconds. Michalia continues to lead the way at Loretta Lynn's, presented by Casio G's One Commando, part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series at Loretta Lynn's. Watching Anthony Rodriguez third in this race, Jeff Emick trying to go after your leader, Matt Bichalia with Cooper Webb in second. And for Rodriguez, you got to wonder, without that flat tire in Moto2, after right. winning Moto1, what could have been? He's got a great Moto going here in Moto3. So it's really going to come down to Bichalia here, your leader, and Webb in second. Webb needs to not only beat Bichalia in this Moto, he needs someone to finish between them and then Webb would be able to take the point lead and win this championship. So the pressure really beginning to build on both of those riders. Yeah, and they're starting to get into the lapped riders here a little bit too. That can play a part, but 
Webb being on the Yamaha, Rodriguez on the Yamaha. He needs his brand teammate there, Rodriguez, to get up here, get into this fight, and Webb needs to go win this moto to have any chance at the overall over Bichelli. We'll give everyone an idea of how big a factor lap traffic could be. Could this give Webb and Rodriguez the opportunity they've been looking for? Well, it could be if Matt gets a little too close to somebody or if a rider holds him up. He's a smart rider. He's turned thousands of laps around the ranch here, and he knows exactly what to do. He's putting on such a fantastic ride at this point, it's hard to think that he's going to make any mistakes from here all the way to the checkered flag and eventually that number one plate. Yeah, but Webb and Rodriguez are not going to give up in pursuit. They know that anything can happen here at Loretta's. It has happened before, but Shelly is just trying to hang on through the Ten Commandments. And remember, classes for everyone out here at the ranch, not just for the boys, but for the girls and the women's division as well. And they are definitely dedicated, fierce competitors also. A lot of people kind of give me a hard time about doing it because it is a male dominated sport but you know that's just one thing that makes you tougher kind of, kind of thing. My dad would pull up with my dirt bike and all the kids would be like you ride motocross and I was like no I don't ride motocross like I don't want anyone to really know. Back home there's probably two girls that are fast so there's no competition so we came over here and the competition's a lot broader. You know, there's 10 girls that I feel are good enough to win. Yeah, Loretta's gets a lot of hype. Um, it's definitely a big race and everyone gets a little nervous for it. Um, over the years I've gotten used to it and I really enjoy coming to it. Uh, you definitely have to stay focused during the week. You can never get unfocused or you'll just go out and have a bunch of bad rides. A lot of my friends are back home and still going to school and working and I'm riding motocross for a living. I'm so about Loretta's because you just come here and first moto is always fun. Like you get your heart rate so worked up for that moto. I like riding. I like hanging with my friends and family. I mean, motor, like all the motocross people are like family to me. I like competing with the guys, more competition and I don't know, I just like it. You know, I want to win, but if I don't, I think it's just a good achievement just to get, even get here. Um, you know, first Shane as of yesterday to win a moto in 20 years. So I think so far the week's gone really good. Always great racing there in the women's class and great racing here with the boys of 250B Modified. The last lap and Matt Vachalia's lead beginning to dwindle. Cooper Webb in second on the number 75, keeping him honest down the stretch. Webb is definitely putting the pressure on and a win is not going to necessarily win him the championship, but it's going to give them some bragging rights because we've split motos between Rodriguez and Bichelia. Okay, Bichelia out front, really focused right now, hitting his lines perfectly. Could be on his way to the championship, half a lap to go. And remember, it's one race all year to determine your future in the sport. How much pressure is on Bichelia right now on this last lap? Oh, he's loving it. This is what these riders live for. This is what they train hard for day in, day out. But it's coming down to it, about a quarter of a lap to go. Webb really putting the pressure on now, trying to get that moto win. He has really closed it up. Now remember, Bichelia passed Webb in the third turn of this race. And now, in the last stage, Webb is back within distance. Couple of lapped riders just up front. I don't think they're going to play a part. Uh, time is running out for Webb's charge. He definitely made a run for it, but only one turn to go. And the kid out of Texas, Matt Bichelia, in what many think was the most competitive class here all week, wins the Moto and the 250B Modified National Championship. Here it is, Matt Michelia through the checkered flag. Oh, can't wait to see his parents at the finish. Yes, both arms in the air. That is one good feeling. And a great run by Webb. He finishes second and third. We'll go to the rider from Venezuela, Anthony Rodriguez. Here are the results from this third moto. Clout and Owen also inside the top five. And the overall points look like this. Bichelia, Webb, and Clout top three. Rodriguez, that rough second moto with an 18th place finish, drops him down to the top five. Let's send it down to Tina Dixon with your new champion. Congratulations to Matt, not only winning Moto3, but for the championship. But you were chasing down the leader there at the beginning. Tell us yeah. about setting up the pass and what happened. Yeah, it was good. You know, I got a good start. And, uh, you know, it wasn't exactly where I wanted to be. But, uh, you know, pretty much everybody that I had to beat got the start on me. But uh, thankfully, I wasn't too far back. I made all the passes in the first couple laps. I followed Nick around for a couple laps. And uh, the track was really smooth, really fast. It was hard to get a line on him. but. He made a little mistake and crashed, and uh, you know I capitalized on the mistake, and then I got a comfortable lead on Cooper. 
couple laps from the end, a uh, lapper got in my way and uh, cut me off a couple times and man, almost wrecked my race. But uh, after that, Cooper was right on me. You know, he, he pulled a lot on me right there, but he was riding a great race. And thankfully I was able to get past that lapper and there was only like a lap and a half to go from there. And then I just pulled it back out a little bit more and I couldn't be happier right now, finish, finishing off my intermediate B-class career. And uh, I guess now go get a plate out of my leg and <laughs> go crow. Well, congratulations and best of luck moving forward. Thank you very much. All right, guys, back to you. Thanks, Tina. We're going to give you a recap and show you how Matt Vachalia got this Moto win and championship. Now, Jeff, the start is always so key in motocross, but in this case, Vachalia didn't get a great start. He was able to make passes early. It was a 71 and Nick Gaines who was out front. Vachalia had to make moves. Yeah, he was really aggressive, and he was really confident within that right here, trying to go on the outside. Gaines had a cover, but then he goes down loses the lead and from there Bashelia would roll to victory and he is also the recipient of the Casio G's one commando stomped moment of the day and we're going to take you through this if we didn't play it in slow motion you probably wouldn't even realize this happened check it out yeah right here with his left hand over this tabletop reaches down adjusts his clutch lever clutch adjustment silky smooth making it look that easy and for that he earns the Casio G's one commando stomped moment of the day to go along with that national championship. Now we have the A-Class coming up next, including a teammate of Matt Vachalia, Zach Bell, who's looking to grab a number one plate of his own. So more racing from the Red Lens, presented by Casio G's One Commando, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series at Loretta Lynn's. One of the superstars of pro racing has returned to his roots here as an amateur, and Sal's caught up with him. It's always a good thing for me and my job when I get to run into some of my good old buddies, and this man right here, one of the best, the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael. You've won this event nine times. That's right. Talk to me about that pro class, those kids for whom this race could really mean the difference between continuing to be an amateur and possibly going pro. Yes. What, what's going through their minds over the course of the week and how do they stay focused with, with all this pressure and all the eyes on them? Yeah, that's a great question, Sal. Basically, these kids in the amateur pro class, most of them have made a name for themselves, but if they've won some of the other nationals earlier than the year and they come here and don't uh, live up to their expectation, that's gonna be really hard and they're gonna lose some of their leveraging points. So it's extremely important for those guys that has had all that hype around them to come here and really produce. You know, I, I think the biggest thing, you know, you see some of these guys, I just think sometimes they try to be someone that they're not, you know, and just, you know, be yourself and go out there and race your motorcycle and do the best that you can do. And you're not gonna be doing it laying on the ground and, and making poor decisions. Uh, it's all about decision making and being there at the end. Do what you know how to do. You know I will. As put by none other than the greatest of all time, Ricky Carmichael. Thanks, Sal. 258 class has completed their sight lap. Here's the starting order for Moto3, Bell, Epstein, and Savaji with championship hopes. Let's get a little more insight on Savaji. Tina? Joey Savaggi is one to watch out for. Already has two thirds this week, but he only had a couple days on the bike leading up to this. Yeah, exactly. He had four days on the bike. Uh, he got hurt at Mammoth, California, and he also uh, got injured a little bit doing some testing, but he's back on the bike. He's got two thirds, and that's really great. We're proud of him. He's putting in 100%, so we're looking to get a W in this one. Hopefully, we can seal the deal. All right, well, best of luck, Joey, guys. One to watch out for. Savaji needs a Moto win here in Moto3 to try to upset Bell. We've got the helmet cam on Bell. See what kind of start he pulls on his Honda. And it looks like a good one. Bell putting that number 14 machine out front. He has been lightning out of the gate all week. Jake Bauer on the number 57 Kawasaki going to give chase, Jeff. That was a textbook pole shot for Bell. I mean, he, he had two or three bike links just coming around the first turn alone. You got Tyler Martin in third on the number 43. Kyle Swanson, Austin Burns, Dylan Epstein fighting for a piece of the top five and not a good start for Savaji on the Suzuki just entering the Ten Commandments now. That's top ten at best. So he's got a long way to go, especially with Bell off to the early lead. You can see the track's pretty rough right now. They've put down some water. It's going to be really slippery in spots. But overall, the track is in perfect condition for these riders to go showcase their talents. 
And one of the keys here in the three moto format, the motos take place at different days of the week and at different times of the day. So you've got to be consistent in all weather conditions. Here's the highlights from the first two motos of this class. Moto one, well, looks a lot like Moto 3 right now. Bell gets out to a big early lead based on a whole shot. You got Epstein, Savaggi, and Van Martin giving chase, but no one can catch the 14. And then he's off to the races with a good start again in Moto 2. Another massive hole shot here in Moto 2, but plenty of competition to keep Bell honest. But in the end, some of the fastest lap times of the week powered him to the second Moto victory. And here he is again leading early in Moto number 3 and headed toward a championship if he can stay consistent. Taking a look at the rest of the field here, and there's that small gap that's starting to increase. Bell really has dominated this class here. And look as he just goes through that inside line with such perfection, it's going to be tough for these other riders to catch him here in this final moto. Austin Burns and Dylan Epstein now second and third, a pair of Kawasaki riders. Now, Bell was expected to have some competition this week from a Yamaha rider named Jeremy Martin, but Martin got injured right before this race. So it's an opportunity for it to be a Bell showcase and he has taken full advantage of this opportunity, setting incredibly fast laps, getting all the hole shots, and so far leading all the laps. Executing to perfection, but I tell you, these final motos, if you let your concentration down one little bit, causes you to crash, you could throw away the championship in an, in an instant. So Bell's gonna have to keep his focus, keep working hard, keep charging all the way to the final checkered flag. Burns out of Arizona. And Epstein out of California trying to catch your leader. It's the Red Bull Signature Series from the Red Links. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series from the Red Links. This is the premier class in all of amateur motocross, 250A. And let's get to know some of the players for the championship. Loretta's is really important, obviously, to everyone every year, but especially the pro class because, you know, contracts are up and new rides are being opened. And obviously, going from the A class to the pro pro, you want a good ride when you go there. I have two thirds in the 250A and, um, you know, finally getting some momentum going my way. I've almost got every whole shot of the week and uh, had a few crashes, won a few motos, and, uh, you know, it's been awesome. I've been hurt for three years, been on the bike for about a month now, and, uh, you know, I'm actually out here doing as best as I can and I'm winning, so, uh, couldn't thank everybody enough. Back at it, Savaji on this number 76 Suzuki has really made some progress after a bad start. Here he is making the move on the 57, who was our early leader, Jake Balmer. So Savaji, third in the first two motos, wants more, trying to close in on the leaders in this third race, Jeff. Well, and this being Moto 3 and uh, track being in the condition that it is, really shows that uh, Savaji has got some great fitness, and this is a tough kid. And how about this? Zach Bell on board. You're getting the idea of just how fast he is. The lap times are showing he's one of, if not the fastest rider here all week long. And he makes it look so easy. I mean, his line choice has been excellent. Uh, his corner speed has been great, his technique. And he's just dominated this class and is uh, very deserving uh, to, you know, to be the top amateur going into the pro ranks. Uh, for next year. Yeah, and to give you an idea, the class that we showed earlier in the show, the B class, those riders are generally a year or two away from turning pro. In the A class here, these riders are ready to turn pro just about now. A lot of them are going to turn pro right after this event. So they are basically reaching the pro level, and you can see it in their riding. Very consistent and awfully fast. Well, this is the premier class of the 35 races that are here this weekend. And the interesting thing is you've got all those little kids that are trying to be better racers. They're out there on the fence right now with their parents. They're pointing out and watching this race, learning how to be better riders. Let's check back in with Sal Masakela. Look at us out here in the rolling green hills of Tennessee on the ranch of the first lady of country music, enjoying the best in motocross riding that the country has to offer. I hate to brag, but that's just how we roll on the Red Bull Signature Series, bringing you the most progressive athletes in the world's most unique settings. What are the limits of humankind? What boundaries have yet to be broken? What lies beyond the world of mainstream sports? The Red Bull Signature Series seeks to answer these questions. In the months to come, catch free ride mountain biking in the challenging terrain of Bergen, Utah, and the best off-road racing from the heartland of America. 
the Red Bull Signature Series is spanning the globe, bringing together over 20 of the most progressive and innovative competitions in one epic series. Tune in all year long on NBC and the NBC Sports Network. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series from the Red Lens. Zach Bell leading the way here in 250A. There's also a strong contingent of mini cycle riders here this week, and here's one of the best. My name is Adam Cianciarello. I'm 15 years old, and we're here at Loretta Lens 2012. Well, the week's been going really good so far. Um, I got a. I've gotten all the hole shots so far, like I have a streak going here for some reason. Like last year I got all six hole shots and I've gotten all five, so I have 11 straight so far, which is super key on this track. Racing is just really something I love to do. It's kind of just like anything else. It's I, I, I actually just watched it on TV and I saw it and I loved it. And really since then I got on a bike and didn't really know where it was going to go. And, I guess kind of always in my mind, I've always just thought that I was going to be a pro and obviously it turns into more of a job as you get down the road, but for me right now it's still really fun and I think it's I think it's that way a lot, especially here for you know all the amateur guys. Rolling through the pits, scoping some talent, and of course by talent I mean looking for hot chicks. Really the only chance that a majority of the industry gets to see the, the amateur scene is at Loretta's. So when you throw in the you know the 20 minute motos, a different format, it's more organized and it's like it's way closer to a pro national than an amateur race. And when you get that and you have all the industry, there's obviously a lot of pressure for a lot of the kids out there. And I don't know. When I guess it's just something about Loretta's that makes you just want to throw it down. Cincerolo did throw it down this week. He won every class and every moto that he raced. Battle is on for second here in 250A, which is a division Cincerolo will probably be in the next year or two. This second place battle is between Dylan Epstein on the 80 and Joey Savaggi on the 76. Well, and coming into this final moto, Epstein had a pair of seconds, Savaggi a pair of thirds. So Savaggi wants to break that streak of thirds, get in front of the Kawasaki rider here, Epstein. Looks like Bell has got a pretty good lead at this point, but you never know what can take place. What do you think, Jeff? Does Savaji have a spot picked out, or is he going to follow and put the pressure on? What's the strategy here? He really seems to be following just behind Epstein, and that makes me think that he has a, a passing place in mind. It's just not right here, but he wants to stay right on his rear tire and uh, make his move when he comes to that spot. Great battle developing here. We'll stay with it. For the moment, let's check back in with Sal. With over 33 different classes of riders, ranging in age from 4 to 54, male and female, all going up against the best in their class, you can see there's a whole lot of racing to talk about. So why don't you get involved in the conversation? You can do so by following us on Facebook or Twitter, logging on to RedBullSignalSeries.com with your phone, and you can talk to the riders, the teams, and even other fans just like yourselves. Up next, the main event will continue with the final laps of the 250As. You don't want to miss that. Thanks, Sal, and you can catch more coverage of the Red Bull AMA Amateur National Motocross Championship from the Red Lens on the NBC Sports Network tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, and then again next Sunday, November 18th at 4 p.m. You're watching coverage from the Red Lens presented by Casio G's One Commando, a part of the Red Bull Signature Series. The Red Lens represents the full spectrum of motocross. From the rising stars in the pro class all the way down to the four-year-olds in the peewee class. Virtually every great racer in the last 30 years built their careers right here at the ranch. These youngsters run the same 20-minute moto on the same grueling track as the big bikes. While most kids their age are just learning to swing a baseball bat, these riders are racing for national titles. If you want to know who the future champs of the sport will be, you need to look no further than the podium at Loretta Lynn's. Well, that's where it begins here at Loretta Lynn's in the youth classes for the kids. And this is where it ends for a lot of them in the A class. And the final moto of the week for those riders, still a great battle for second, Dylan Epstein and Joey Savaggi going at it, both originally from California. Epstein still lives out on the West Coast. Savaggi has since moved to Georgia to do his racing and training there. And Jeff, you can talk about it for all these riders. It is a 51 week a year training program to prepare for this one week to prove yourself. 
Well, this is the premier race on the amateur circuit, and I just can't stress enough how much sacrifice and dedication and effort goes into racing amateur motocross, not just by the rider, but by the support group. Mom, dad, brothers, sisters that may not even race, uh, aunts, uncles, grandparents, everybody is supporting these riders, trying to help them achieve their dreams. That's how it was for my family. That's how it is for these young guys. And what is great to see is riders like Joey and Dylan and Zach here up front, them giving it 100% effort, okay, giving their very best when they are out there. And then it makes all that hard work seem worthwhile. And it's such a long week here as we see Bell head toward the white flag, one lap to go that they hold a lot of activities off the racetrack to keep all those family members entertained when they don't have their rider in a race. There's talent shows and singing competitions and crafts that uh, the little kids can get involved with because you're here for a long time and you're only racing maybe once a day. So there's just as much action on the track as off. But if you want to talk about the action that has taken place on the racetrack, the headlines are going to start with Zach Bell dominates 250A, leading every lap, getting every hole shot, and it looks like winning every moto. Yeah, and that's one of the things that is so special about Loretta Lenz. I mean, Zach Bell, he's working towards a professional motocross racing career. Other people, they're here for the vacation, for the festival of what is a Loretta Lenz. And so everyone has something to do here. And I come here every year. I, I love coming down. I love seeing my friends. I love watching battles like this and seeing these young riders grow into men. I mean, I remember when this... This rider here, Zach Bell, was just yep. on a little bike. Now all of a sudden, he's at the pinnacle of amateur motocross and really dominating it at this point here. This has been a, a fantastic three motos here for the Honda rider. Absolutely, has a pretty good gap built up over that Epstein and Savaji battle and now only a few corners to go. And if you're wondering just what it's like to go this fast, well here you're seeing it first person perspective. Well, and he has just been so smooth here this moto. And, you could tell that he was focused. He knew exactly what he wanted to do, that this was the class that he was going to go out and dominate. And what's interesting is his execution has totally been on point. He's going to go through this Kawasaki uh, tabletop and sweeper section, one hand in the, in the air. Yeah. This is it. This is the end of his amateur racing career right now. And going out on top and paving the way toward what many people believe will be great success as a professional in this sport, Zach Bell in dominant fashion is going to take the 250A National Championship. And what a great ride it is. He's about 11 seconds in front of second place right here, Dylan Epstein. Yeah, and Epstein rode well, was able to shake off that pressure from Savaji to hold on and finish in second. There is Savaji taking third, and that was the same order, one, two, three, in all three motos in this class. These guys have definitely figured out the consistency game. Let's check out the results from Moto3. Fourth is going to go to Steven Tokarski, Austin Burns fifth, then Balmert, Swanson, Williams, Martin, and Cody Gregg round out the top ten. And for a lot of these riders, this will be their last race as an amateur. They're headed to the pros, and we're headed down to the podium. Zach, you've been coming here for 12 years, and you said this was your last year at Loretta's. You won all three motos and just dominated. But what did you want this final race to be about for you? Um, I just wanted to be special out there, had some fun, and, uh, of course, the bike was great out there. Pulled an amazing hole shot and just kind of, pulled my own race and uh, Dylan Epstein slid it out so I just kind of slowed down and just had fun out there and made it the best. So many riders come here with the dream of being a champion. It's hard just to qualify for Loretta's and you are now living that dream. How do you sum it up? Uh, I've been racing since 1999 and started training in 2000 and uh, came here on a PW and I've been training my whole life for this moment and going pro and uh, it's my dream and I'm living it up right now. Congratulations, enjoy this. Thank you. Guys, Zach Bell dominating out here. All right, thanks, Tina. And the Red Bull signature moment, well, that goes to Zach Bell as well. And it was all about the starts. Jeff, take us through it. You are exactly right. Bell was one of the fastest riders here this weekend, but he also had his starts down to perfection. Watch him coming around the first turn here in slow motion. Look at that, two bike links over the riders behind him. That is the perfect combination for winning here at Loretta. Led every lap of the 250A class in there is your signature moment from Zach Bell. And here are the final results overall in 250A. Bell, Epstein, Savaji, Burns, and Martin, your top five. For Tina Dixon and Jeff Emig, I'm Jason Wigand. Thanks for joining us. Can't wait to be back at Loretta Lynn's next year. Let's send it back to Sal.
Once again, Loretta Lynn's makes history for motocross. Congratulations to the riders who showed us that they intend to be the future of this sport, as well as all the other riders, young and old, continuing to push themselves at this historic event. The Red Bull Signature Series continues on December 8th at Rampage, along with the Torque Off-Road Championships on December 29th, both right here on NBC. For all of us here at NBC Sports, I'm Sal Masekela, and I'll see you guys next time.